Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to the latest episode of our entertainment show. As you know, we've been building up live on air for the last month or so, previewing and excitedly anticipating our season two of our Stargate sci-fi called Classics Documentary. Season one, it was a major success. We had 38 episodes in total. We had everyone from Eric Avari, Alexis Cruz, Tara Rozier, uh, Eric um, Robert Deva Davy, um, this goes on and on from people who have appeared in Stargate the movie, Stargate SG-1, Stargate Atlantis, uh, Stargate Universe and Stargate Origins. And to, we're delighted now to be going on to season two and we've such a stellar cast of actors and actresses lined up to tell us about their experiences of uh, premiering in the sci-fi uh, domain that is the Stargate universe and what it was like for them. And this, today's episode, we're delighted to be joined by the one and only Seleka Matthew, uh, who appeared in Stargate SG-1 and she also appeared in Stargate Universe. In Stargate SG-1, she played the system lord Kali. She appeared in The Summit and The Summit Last Stand. And she also played the role of Constance uh, in Stargate uh, Universe. And uh, Seleka, first of all, delighted to have you. Delighted to share your experiences at I know we're delving back now roughly 20 years in terms of uh, Stargate, nearly around 20 years, probably not just there yet. We're going very close to it, I imagine. Um, oh, so, yeah. Yeah. 2001? 2001. So we have gone to 20 years. So we have gone to 20 years since your uh, your appearance as Cali. And can I ask you, uh, your appearance in Cali came roughly around... Season six, season seven, six, season season eight, around that era uh, in five. season five. Okay, season five in terms of uh, Stargate. So it was well, well out there, well sustained, uh, well a sort of successful show all across Canada, spread to USA, had gone global at stage, that stage. Had you were you based in Vancouver at the time, or had you pre tried out for previous roles in the previous seasons, or was it something just your talent agent in the United States said, "Listen, we got this role that we we think might be perfectly suited for you. They're looking for a, a female actress of Indian sort of de descent to play this Hindu sort of goddess." And how did it come about? Thanks for saying she's a goddess. I appreciate that, Jim. Um, how did it come about? I grew up in Vancouver. Okay. So we all auditioned for everything. So I imagine I'd probably done a couple of Stargate auditions before that. But for sure, that was the first one. And then years later, five years later, hmm. 10 years later, I did Constance. So okay. I was based in Vancouver. I'm based in Los Angeles now. But at the time, I was there. And uh, in terms of the character, Kali, when you saw what they were, the script writers and producers and directors were trying to do with her in terms of her background story, did you sort of base her on anyone? Did you go back in types of agent history, do a bit of sort of research in terms of the, the folklore and heritage of what they wanted to how you wanted to portray the female actress, uh, Kali, in terms of... So her backstory, she's the first girl to take a human host. She's worshipped as a Hindu goddess. She's earned the name, the destroyer in terms of. So what sort of aspects did you want to jump off the page to you in terms of how you wanted to showcase her? I think because she's Kali, which is the goddess of destruction and doom, that's just right there. That's enough to tell you how she goes about her business. And I do want to flag that, you know, the wonderful world of sci-fi and the wonderful world of Stargate, they really promoted diversity way before the call to do so. So when I was watching that episode, I was looking around the room like, wow, well done. It's really well represented. And it's kind of nice to think that we think of the future as being that way. Mm. I thought it was excellent. Uh, but in terms of Cali, you know, so much of I, my research was about understanding the world of Stargate. So I watched a lot of episodes to get to the point of going, what is this world? What are you all doing? And so Kali seemed simple. And it's the trick of sci-fi. I think that when it's done well, 
it makes the big small and the small big. Hmm. We're talking about the universe. And so how do you have complex little human moments within that world that the audience relates to? There's um, a moment in that episode and Courtney J. Stevens is such a phenomenal actor and he's dying and he's sick and broken throughout the episode, but he's still spitting out volumes of information for the audience and for the crew. And I just looked at him and I thought, power to you. What, like to make the big, small and the small little, is it, how did, how did I say it? The big, small and the small, big. I, I thought he was phenomenal, phenomenal. And Suleika, in terms of, we see you on the ship, we see you with the different sort of system lords and all the sort of, brush and egotistically uh, creatures that they were in terms of their sort of menace. How did you feel in terms of interacting and portraying uh, this sort of conniving sort of woman who, well, like all ghoul were in terms of they were out for themselves, but also you had to show no sort of weakness in sort of those characters. So there was even the sort of facial expressions uh, when you were all together, they had to be all strong, defiant sort of, fear sort of grit and look into your sort of faces in terms of the the the, the interaction sort of between you just these system lords these goals as such well martin wood is a fantastic director so there's so many of us in that room and we all have a different opinion and we also have different alliances so sometimes what helps is knowing how you feel about each and every person so if the camera ever catches you looking at some person the audience knows exactly how you feel about that person or about mm. that war movement. And Suleika, in terms of when you arrived on Stargate SG-1 for the first time, when you appeared on the set and you got to see the sets that you were working on, uh, were you sort of blown away in terms of the detail, in terms of how they were able to produce a, a set like that, in terms of the resemblance, obviously, in terms of the, the ship make out, in terms of the outer space sort of thing? We almost felt like you were in a fantasy world that you closed your eyes, that you sort of dreamt of as a little girl, were you sort of blown away in how quick they can assemble these sets and put them together? I think it's a phenomenal crew. And I think it's so detailed and there was just so much little attention to a you know an inspiration or a, a concept so you know a lot of us actors went into acting because we love the world of make-believe so when you get to go on a show and it is like even more make-believe it's uh it's just one of those days where you go oh I love what I do for a living I also was tremendously helped and inspired by Christine McQuarrie's um, costumes. That is hands down the best outfit I have ever worn in my professional career. There was okay. one moment where I was standing up making a, had to take a stand about something and I stamped my foot and my whole, you know, headpiece tilted forward and everyone burst out laughing. But apart from that, there, it gave Callie this um, carriage. So whatever and, we we're wearing made us act a certain way. And that that's great when it informs an actor, right? Suleika, in terms of working as well in that episode, in terms of Michael Shanks and Vince Crashow or play prominent roles in that sort of episode, did you get to mingle much with uh, Michael Shanks and Vince Crashow in between sort of takes? And uh, obviously they had played such a prominent role in terms of Lord Yu, uh, the system Lord Yu, Vince Crenshaw, and then Michael Shanks was his uh, imposter type uh, uh, apprentice or first prime. And uh, did you feel the, the, the chemistry between those two actors in, in the terms of how they were able to pull that off? Michael Shanks is an absolute sweetheart. So it was just lovely to, you know, hang out with all of those actors that day. I think it's you know, we love playing together, mostly. For the most part, the generalization of actors is, you know, we're like kids in a playground. So yeah, we joke, we kibitz between sets, between um, setups. It's one of the perks of the job. And Suleika, in terms of coming back again, you mentioned nearly a decade later in Stargate Universe, 
to play the role of Constance. How did that come about? Obviously, a different sort of world, a different environment, completely new cast. Do you almost feel like it was a new show? And that's what people thought about it at the time, that it, it took on more um, a Battlestar Galactica sort of vibe where these people were lost in space and they were trying to get their way back home rather and their stories and their emotions and what goes on in terms of the, the tribulations of human life rather than off-world uh, excavations or uh, exploration, which Stargate SG-1 was about. How did you find Universe? Did you feel that it was a different sort of take in the whole Stargate uh, reality? Well, it wasn't a tribal council meeting. It was my scenes were in the hospital. Mm. So it felt very humanistic stories right based yeah. on earth so it no it didn't feel like the same show but i think that's kind of a good thing Which, and know, did, it'd be terrible to remake the same show over and over again and did you feel that you feel even though it had the stargate name did you feel an almost like the resemblance do you feel there was a separate sort of entity on its own yeah I think it was a separate entity. I was also working with Robert Carlyle, who is a fantastic, generous, and marvelous actor to watch. So yes, you hope that every experience is going to be different and every world you enter is going to be different. I think it's more fun for us. And Saleka, I know it's a busy time for you now at the moment as well. You're uh, eager and enthusiastic and you're busy as a bee in the terms of out in Los Angeles at the moment uh, with projects going on left, right and centre. You might enlighten our audience if you're able to about something that you, projects that might be coming up on the pipeline. I do believe uh, family members and beloved uh, uh, members of the Matthew, Matthew household have been delving in a really intriguing project as well. My daughter, Maddie Kelly, she's a Kelly, yes, so there's some Irish there. Uh, she and two other comedians in Canada, Mark Chavez and Ryan Beals, made this hilarious, interesting podcast called Let's Make a Sci Fi. And uh, they pulled me in to do a uh, part in the read through of the sci-fi pilot they actually wrote. So it's on CBC podcast or wherever you get your podcast. That was really fun. And then what I just finished, which I hope you all look out for is um, Anne Rice's Mayfair Witches on AMC. I think it'll be coming out next year. I, I don't even know if I'm allowed to talk about what part I played, but I had a great time in New Orleans making. Okay, and Slaker, for the final two questions, I'm going to bring you back to Stargate uh, SG-1. And uh, the yeah. second second last question, I'm going to ask you something personal now in terms of your time in Stargate SG-1. Have you any unique story, any memory, any sort of blooper from your time on the set of Stargate SG-1 that's special to you or any interaction with a cast member that makes you laugh that was offset? It doesn't have to be about Stargate, but you'll always remember, even if you see them there today, that it was a fond memory. It still cracks you up or it's remember that sort of time that people aren't aware of but obviously it's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of that person or you think of that time in Stargate I think as I was saying about um you know the wonderful world of make-believe one of the funniest moments on that show is when we all pulled symbiotes out of a vat yes and yes him. and so you have to understand there was nothing in our hands Okay. So I was very grateful to my mime school background that allowed me to like pull a symbiote out and munch on it. And we were all just like, like this? Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. And then they'd give us directions about ooh, more like this. And it was just funny. Like five of us pulling imaginary eels out so of- you're, So back. you're biting, you're biting imaginary air really. It's your whole mouth open, whole teeth exposed and just going like that. Just doing it, just giving her. Yeah. And do, did you want to see how that would play back in green screen or at the time were you intrigued or did you want to see the episode to see that particular scene, to see what actually was going into your post? Oh yeah, when I watched it, I think those are the two things that shocked me was the eels or the symbiotes and also the voice. 
Like they don't really tell you that, oh, by the way, we're going to modulate your voice. And when I saw it, I thought all these things that you add to a character, create a character, right? You have yeah. this world, you have these jobs or roles, of, like she's an overlord. And you have these relationships, you have a specific costume that makes you act a certain way, you're eating eels. And then you find out your voice has changed too. And it was bloody marvelous, really. And Saleka Matthew, now the final question I have for you, and uh, I ask everyone this, I've asked them since episode one of our Stargate doc documentary in season one, right up to yourself now. Let's pretend there was a Stargate encyclopedia, a dictionary as such, and they put every character into that encyclopedia dictionary, uh, A to Z, and under, they came down to your fictional character, Kali, and underneath our synopsis, they left two blank sentences. And they got onto your talent agent and they said, we want Suleika Matthew to write those two sentences to summarize the character of Kali. What would you like those two sentences to read? Fierce. Sharp sartorial sense. Favorite snack, symbiotes. Okay. <laughs> uh, Saleka Matthew, on that uh, note, a pleasure talking to you today to relive your memories of playing Callie in Stargate at SG-1 in the episode Summit and Summit Last Stand. You play one of the most vigorous uh, female uh, system lords of the Gauls. You also appeared in Stargate Universe and played the character Constant. And who knows, uh, you might come back to Vancouver if there's a new series uh, debuting sometime in the near future and relive call, those Jim. worlds. Because uh, in fairness, we don't know what happened to Callie in terms of she could still be out there. She is, technically, she's still alive. She's missing MOA. She's missing in action, as the saying goes, where she might pop up. Uh, who knows? I mean, do do we want to say spin-off, Jim? I think so. I think so. It's, uh, it's amazing in the works. It. And think all. about yeah. it. Yeah. Slake and matches. an absolute pleasure taking to you, uh, talking to you today. Take care. God bless and stay safe. Thank you for having me here. Thank you.